welcome to another video. My name is Nigel and welcome to Nigel's Cheap Vlogs, also known as a Lake Erie Vlogger. And this is an impromptu um, video, basically. Um, I just came out for a ride because it's the first time I've been out for two weeks. And the temperature, as you can tell, has changed. Uh, two weeks ago, it was 30 degrees. The weather was nice. It was very humid. And now it is uh, currently 14 degrees. It's uh, 1 in the afternoon, 1.30 in the afternoon, 14 degrees, uh, slightly cool breeze. And fall is really in the air right now. Anyway, I, I always bring a camera with me because I never know what I'm going to do and what I plan on doing. And I found myself coming all the way over from Crystal Beach and I'm here in Port Coburn. And I'm just actually just outside Port Coburn and there's a couple of ships coming through. So I thought I'd best start rolling the camera. Uh, there's two ships already out there, which have already, well, one's already gone and one's waiting to come in. And there's two just coming out now. So um, let's have a little play around Port Coburn for a little while and uh, check out these ships as they uh, venture out of the harbour. So what we'll do, we'll wait for this ship to come out and once this one's come out, we will then uh, head into the harbour. So I just want to get on the other side of this marker. Actually, which way is the sun? Actually, the sun's on this side, still. So I'll wait over here for it. Try and get the sun so it shines on it. There's nothing worse than a backlit boat. <laughs> so uh, we'll just sit over here and wait. Now, isn't that just typical? The ship that's coming through is probably the only ship I can't pronounce. Uh, well, I'll give it a go anyway. <laughs> this CSL Asinibon. Asinibon? Asinibon. Asinibon. Oh, I don't know. But that's its name. Uh, built in 1977. It's just come through the locks here at Port Coburn as it makes its way uh, through the Great Lakes over to Duluth. Um, that's its destination anyway. But it's, it's always cool when I'm here and I get to see the ships here on the Great Lakes. It's really cool. Yeah, I seriously had a problem pronouncing the name of this particular ship. Anyway, I just took a screenshot from Marine Traffic app of the actual ship where it is right now, as I unfortunately forgot to do it when I was actually sat on the water looking at it. So as you can see right now, it's going between Duluth and Quebec, and it had passed through Port Coburn. But this is a ship. That is a name, CSL Assini... I don't know. I don't know how you pronounce that. Assini Boyne. Asi Asi Boyne? As 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 I don't know. It looks like it looks like an asterisk next to the ass. <laughs> I haven't got a clue how to pronounce that. Someone help me out. Well yeah, great ship. 1977, so 45 years old. As it pushes its way through the lake here. Uh, 32 feet of water. And what we'll do, we'll go on the back end of it in a minute. Get to see its giant propeller. See, all these scuff marks all the way down the side are all caused by going through the locks uh, repetitively. Looks like it's had a bit of a patch-up job there down at the back. Look at that kicking up there from its propeller. one ship down let's go and find another one because I see quite a few down here uh, some of them are being scrapped but I also see another uh, one in service so let's head on down there now this ship down here may be docked I'm not 100% sure uh, but it's a busy time of the year uh, the Great Lakes uh, shipping season ends in a couple of months uh, well I say a couple of months like three uh, in this area it usually runs up until the last week of December uh, and then that's it then it's done for three months and that's all due to ice and conditions. So anyway, this is Port Coburn I'm in. Been here many times on many videos, but it's always great to come here. A lot of history here when it comes to maritime uh, stuff. Uh, shipping, merchant navy, and even here we have a, a boneyard here where ships come down here to be scrapped. Oh, 
Oh, uh, the ship down there is actually uh, anchored up. I can see the rope on it. Uh, but let's have a quick look at these uh, ships here that have been uh, decommissioned and are now being scrapped. Uh, at the beginning of the season, when we did our first ride down here, uh, these two were already here. They just arrived. Uh, Manistee and uh, Ojibwe. Um, slowly coming apart. Let's just quickly pause it there. Uh, these two vessels here are both self-discharging carriers. The one on the left is Ojibwe and the one on the right is Manistee. Uh, Manistee had been uh, moored up in uh, Toledo for like six years and then it was decided it was going to be scrapped so they brought it up to Port Coburn back in the spring of this year around about the same time as Ojibwe made its way up here. As you can see from the information I put on the screen, uh, Ojibwe was built in 1952 and Manistee was built back in 1943. So they've had a very long uh, career out on the Great Lakes, uh, sailing up and down the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence and um, doing what they do best. And there's plenty of websites out there showing amazing photographs of these vessels in action. Now these were absolute classics in the day, probably going back to the 1940s, 1950s. And all those years going up and down the Great Lakes, as far as the St. Lawrence, Lake Superior and places like that and at, the, at some time, at the end of the day, they're, they're going to be scrapped and uh, this is where some of them come. Here, Port Coburn. I don't want to get too close. I don't, but uh, 35 feet, I'm good. Make sure there's nothing sticking up. It's like a ghost ship now with all the rust. Windows taken out. And the rust all on the side here. Very creepy. How close to get it together. Oh, gotta go back, gotta go back. Really low water here. Four feet, 11 feet. So it just changes right there. That. Big ships. A jibway. I get to ride down the side of it. All those scuff marks all over it. Amazing. Now, I think I've mentioned this before in other videos, uh, but you know where that's from? If you're from Toronto, or live in Toronto, or been to Toronto many, many times, uh, you may recognise, well, you might not recognise it now, look at the state of it, but uh, that, I believe, is what is left of Captain John's. Remember that? Yeah, it is. It's got, there it is around the front. It says Captain John's. Remember that restaurant? The ship restaurant that was at the bottom of, uh, was it Bay or Young Street? In the harbour there, it was there for many, many years. They got towed out about seven or eight years ago. Well, it came here to be scrapped. And that is all that is left of it, Captain John's, and it's the bridge. Look at the size of this beast. Algoma Transport, uh, currently just moored up here in Port Coburn. And this is des the destination for this one is Toledo, uh, just at the bottom end of Lake Erie. But I don't know when he's going to be leaving. Uh, it doesn't look like he's anytime soon because there's no engines running. But just to give you a, a perspective of the size of it, look at that. A couple of guys up there working on it, probably just checking the holes, the bays, or what they load into it. Very long. Huge. Built in nineteen seventy nine, this one. Big anchor on the back. Look at that just tucked away just up there. 
Now this is part of the old locks. Uh, probably part of the old canal. Because uh, the canal's been done, like, I think it's gone the third revision of the canal. So these are some of the old uh, stone walls from the original ones. Unfortunately, you can't go anywhere further than those yellow uh, markers there. But last time I came down here, this was all dug up down here, and I couldn't even get past this bit. Because all this, see the concrete wall they got here, all this was uh, under construction. So, get to go a little bit further. Oh, I wish I could just let it rip and just fly up there. But oh no, they won't let me. Keep an eye out for rocks, because they do stick out. Some weedy grass. So yes, yeah, as far as I can go. But I get to come up the other side now. So this would have been a rotate, well, well you can see the wheels on it, so this was a rotating rail bridge. Uh, so when this part of the canal was in use, as the ships came up, back in the day it would have been smaller ships, uh, but this would have just turned around, uh, swirled around to uh, allow the ships to uh, come through the canal. I love seeing stuff like this, I find it absolutely fascinating. The old cogs. Never to be turned again. Sad. It's fascinating though. So I have to presume uh, this wall has been here for well over a hundred years. It's still standing. It's still in pretty good shape. All right, just going to stop the video right there. On the left-hand side, you can see the uh, the structure for the lift bridge, which is this particular bridge here we saw when we came in. Uh, but when I was doing some research, I pulled up this old photograph I found, and there used to be two bridges. So anyway, we're here. It's going to put you exactly where I am, right in that old section of the canal. And this is, we're looking at the bridge uh, furthest up, uh, the one above. Uh, but there used to be another one, and apparently that one was taken down in 1997. But it's just fascinating looking at his old photograph to see there used to be two lift bridges there. Now, something caught my eye down here, and I think I put it on an earlier video I did a couple of years ago. Like, just over a year ago. So I'm going to see if I can just duck a little bit, standing up. Scratch my head on that. See, even the whole little uh, big hooks there to tie stuff up with would have been used and still left here but nothing would have been moored here for years absolutely years i'll just check this out <laughs> i don't know what that would have been for now anyone from port coburn or any sailors who watch my channel do you know what that would have done it looks like it would have turned something. Would it have been a lock gate? Oh, yes. That's exactly what it would have been. It would have been the doors to the lock. This is where they would have been, looking at the angle to the steps there. I'm guessing uh, this is where the doors may have been for the lock. It's the only thing I can think of. Yeah? No? Doors for the lock? Let's go with yeah. Replaced by stairs over there. All right, I'm just going to pause it once again. Uh, could this be connected to the Hopkins Swing Bridge that was once here? I was going to put an old photograph, uh, up, which I found online once I got home, uh, but I do believe this bridge is just slightly a few feet further up than where I am, but it could be connected. If not, it could be actually like I thought originally thought it could be. It could be part of the lock itself. Tell you what, we'll go up there in a minute. The alarm's just gone off. Can you hear it? Uh, the ship's getting close to coming in. So the stopping traffic... The arms are going to go down, there they go, the arms are going down. So I'll go this side quickly so we can see it, because the ship is coming in pretty quick now. And now we'll just have to wait for the bridge to go up. Stay way out of his way, it's a big ship that's coming in. So the bridge goes up, 
That's a quite uh, fast pace as well. That's going up really quick. See the counterweights on either side. That will bring it down, the hydraulics and the counterweights. And as we see the ship making its way in. That looks like an international kind of style ship. Probably heading out to the St. Lawrence looking at the... Uh, the bow of that, the bow is completely different design than these Great Lakers. So this is the uh, Maria G, uh, Maltese registered uh, ship. Uh, just coming from uh, Sault Ste. Marie. And it's got its destination here is Port Coleman, but I actually think it's carrying on. Uh, this definitely looks like a ship that's going to make its way out into the ocean. You can tell what I mean by the bow. The bow is completely different than the Lake Liners, has a big nose on it. Uh, that's one of the big differences of the uh, ships that uh, are either ocean or Lakers. Uh, Lakers are very blunt looking like the one we just saw over here. And this one's got a bow nose uh, at the front. So anyway, this was built in 2007. And she's a big ship. As I'm editing this uh, video, I found out this ship's actually heading to Barai, which is in Italy. There he goes. Just about to get under the bridge. Cool, eh? Of course, I can't go through there. All I can do is stay behind it, like this, as far as here. Well, there you have it. A couple of big ships coming through here at Port Coburn, one going out, one coming in. Cool. That bridge will come down any second now. Right, I'm gonna go back to doing what I was doing a minute ago. I was gonna try and get over there and uh, just quickly look at that uh, steering, that wheel there. Quite a bit of a wake still coming from that ship. I don't know how secure those steps are. All right, the video was going uh, okay until this very moment and all of a sudden you're gonna hear a click and that is the sound of my microphone dying. Yep, right there, that is it. Audio completely gone. The rest of the footage from the day has gone. So what I'm gonna do is find some music. I'm gonna uh, talk, narrate over it. But what I did do, because I lost so much video, uh, I've had to leave a bit of it out. I actually went back just the other day and uh, actually uh, went for a ride down there with another CD rider. And what I'm gonna do is add that in. And I got some great drone footage as well of a ship that was brought in to be scrapped, which is a hundred years old. So that's all coming up in a few minutes. So just hang on, I'll just quickly narrate this a little bit. Then I'll add in the new footage. So I noticed this wheel uh, from a distance. I had to go and check it out. Uh, first of all, I thought it was a wheel off a ship and as part of the steering mechanism. Uh, but as I got a bit closer, I started to look at it and realize uh, the chances are it's not. Because uh, it looks like the way it's positioned where it is right there, it may have something to do with the bridge that was there. And the reason why I say that is because when I got home, I did find a really old photograph, which I've already showed you. But if I enlarge it, which I'm going to do in a minute, it'll, I'll show you the... Um, the footbridge and I'll also show you the actual locks which we were talking about earlier so give me a second right we'll just pause the frame right there so this is the wheel that's going to bring up the old photograph right now 
So here you have it, the photograph of the two bridges. It's going to zoom in for you right now. And we're going to look at that. The arrow's pointing to where I am right now. I think I am anyway. Okay, uh, that is the footbridge, which would have been here many, many years ago. And that's the lock right there. Uh, which is, the, that's, that's probably what I was talking about earlier on, was that lock system. Uh, so my question is, this wheel behind me, which, I, which I'm looking at right now, is that part of the mechanics for that bridge, I wonder, the actual footbridge? If anyone in Port Coburn knows, uh, or can point me in the right, the right direction to find out, I'll be most appreciated, because I love history like this. There is just something about big ships moving ever so slowly and creepy music. I just couldn't resist putting this uh, like really haunted music to it. Uh, this ship is old. It's been out there for a long, long time. It's got a lot of history. It's got a lot of stories to tell, most likely. I just found it very fascinating to add this little piece of music uh, to it. But uh, in the video, you can see the, uh, the size difference of me and the ship itself as it uh, slowly passes me. And uh, you may have heard a little bit of creepy noise earlier on, that's because the other uh, the, other, the camera that's recording right now, that microphone works, that's my uh, other GoPro. Uh, the one I'm holding in my hand is the one that doesn't work. So anyway, back to the ship. What was all that about? The picture of the car instead of the ship. How bizarre. I'm back in Port Coburn, the winds are light and the drone is up. Things have changed since I was here last week. Um, the Ojibwe and Manistee have been separated, as you can see in the shot here. And uh, behind uh, Manistee, which is the one to the right right now, which we're gonna go right over. So the one on the left is Ojibwe. Sorry, the one on the left is Manistee, and the one on the right is the ST Crapo, which arrived on September the 29th, and it's here for scrap. It's nearly 100 years old. Uh, it was commissioned and uh, first set sail back in 1927, uh, mainly carrying cement, uh, but it's here now in Port Coburn to be scrapped. And a shame I missed this just a couple of days ago coming in. Uh, but it was nice to catch a drone shot of it anyway, even though it's tucked in behind uh, Manistee. So anyway, a uh, cool drone shot there, I think, uh, overlooking the, uh, the top of it.
Tim S. Duel. All right, back down at Port Coburn. Uh, <laughs> in the earlier video, we had to stop it because the microphone stopped working. And uh, yeah, I fried it by putting a wet connection in it. And a couple of new boats here. Nice uh, yacht from Fort Lauderdale. I think they're both from Fort Lauderdale. And we've got an old liner coming through. So we're gonna grab a coffee and uh, have a little break here in Port Coburn. Oh, someone else is with me now. On my first trip, I was on my own. And I got Jasmine with me okay. from uh, Crystal Beach. Adventure Crystal Beach and I'll show you some of her CDs later on in the video so uh, but anyway yeah she just came along for the ride uh, we, we, we both have the afternoon off so we thought we'll go for a ride so we're down here on a pleasant October's day now we've got to go and find a coffee Another busy day down at Port Coburn. So when I came down here uh, the other week, they just started painting this. I don't think I could put it on the video, but I may have caught it, but in case I did, nice mural. That's really cool. That's really cool. Maybe I'll come over here. That's nice. Excellent. Are you just closing? Okay, thank God for that. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, hello. Hello. Oh yeah, we started here back in April when the season started and I'm back here at the season ends. This is so cool. Hazelnut, cinnamon, almond, peppermint, um, hazelnut, not sugar-free, and then toffee. Oh, hazelnut, non-sugar. Oh my God, we're roasting. It's, it's like 18 degrees outside, but when you stop, and because you've got layers on, you start to sweat and it gets warm really quick and jasmine's already like stripping down here in the coffee shop it's like uh yeah now i'm having a hot drink to boot oh, perfect it's the beauty of a boat couple of million four or five million not cheap whatever it is check out her machine that is a sweet ride all right heading back to Crystal Beach <coughs> and uh, yeah nice little ride out here today unexpectedly web is beautiful got to about 18 degrees today uh, mild southwesterly winds really help so I don't have to wear gloves today uh, the other day when I was out, I had to put the gloves on because I could feel the chill in the air. But today is much, much nicer. So, yeah, this boat wasn't here the other day either. All right, we're out of here. Thanks, Port Coven. We'll be back next season. See what you have to offer. But in the meantime, I'm going home.
Oh, by any chance, if, you, if you're ever down in Crystal Beach, you want to rent a, a, a CD, uh, check out Jasmine's uh, company here and uh, yeah, rent yourself a CD. Crystal Beach, I should say Adventure Crystal Beach. Uh, yeah, uh, brand new uh, Sea-Doo GTXs uh, for rental. As you can see right there, 